You're you're a brand new Congress endorsed Republican candidate. That's a rare. <laughs> yes, sir. There are currently only two of us. Um, we're looking to expand the slate, though. We're, yeah. we're we're actually looking into a couple different Republicans that have similar ideals. Um, I've been asked to look into a couple of them. They seem like pretty solid people. Uh, we'll we'll have to see what happens. But there there is a movement across the country of of independent minded Republicans that that see what is going on in our government and especially in our party. And we're against it, and we want to reform the GOP. Nice. And and I, so your term there's an independent Republican. I like that. That's uh, a different, yeah. separate from the GOP or the establishment machine, right? And and so I take it you're not going to get any help from the GOP party in your candidacy. Well, let's just say they haven't been knocking on my door just yet. Um, <laughs> you know, well, fingers crossed, right? But uh, I, I I don't really foresee that. Um, the only the only thing I could see that, that would help is, you know, across the country, we've seen in, in Virginia recently, there were Democrats that were elected to a lot of places that have been uh, heavily Republican before that. And of course, we had Doug Jones winning in Alabama, which that's kind of sad to me that it took um, yeah. the, basically a, a child molester um, to get the Republican Party to kind of open their eyes there to think maybe they're not bulletproof in in all of the the quote unquote red areas. Uh, you know, some of the policies that have been going across just they don't vibe with the American public, and so the Republican Party is going to have to make a choice. Um, they're going to choose either their donors or their constituents, and if they choose the the former, they may not be viable as a party for a lot longer. Um, and and you know, we're seeking to take back the GOP. Um, back to whenever Lincoln abolished slavery or Teddy Roosevelt actually saved 230 million acres of, of what are now public lands. Uh, that's the GOP I grew up uh, admiring, and that's the GOP I want to, to have in place again. Wow. Well said. I like that. That's, that gives me hope. I like that. I, I, <laughs> Thank you. There's a, there's a lot of, on the saving of the GOP or the, whatever you want to call it, reformation of the GOP party, um, it seems like, a lot of these older guard GOP, the people that I remember from the 80s, just the regular GOP. Now we have this kind of crazy level GOP. But the regular guard is retiring, quitting, getting out, taking all the money and running, you know, which I good, good get out because run while you can. What I say, yeah. we're coming for you. Right. So uh, do you think do you think that's what's happening? Do you think the Republican Party itself is like we're fine with collapse? We're getting out of here. Or do you think there are still people within the party that have some decency and want to keep it alive? Yeah, there, there are. There's absolutely some. Um, we we kind of have fallen to. OK, I don't remember the term exactly, but it, it was it was in media a long time ago. Something to do with if it if it bleeds, it reads or something like that. Oh well, um, yeah, it's sensationalism. It's but yeah, it's yeah, it, it, exactly. There, there are good Republicans who are in Congress right now that we just don't hear about. Right. Um, I, I, I read a book recently uh, written by Ken Buck, who's who's currently a congressman, I believe, from Colorado. It was called Drain the Swamp, and in it, he discussed a lot of the issues in his freshman term as a U.S. House representative of the corruption that he saw uh, in politics with money mm -hmm. in the Republican Party and in the Democrat. Democratic Party. He focused primarily on the Republican Party because he was a Republican, so he would see uh, he had a lot more visibility on what went on on the inside. But in it, he mentioned a lot of efforts from Republican representatives who I'd never even heard of. You, you never hear of in in the media, and they were trying to do things like like for instance these huge omnibus bills. Um, you know, there are different programs that are on there that haven't been reauthorized since 1995 that we are spending money on. Wow. And there are Republicans who are trying to break that up to make people have to reauthorize it so that the government's just not wasting money on programs that we don't need anymore. Right. Um, so, you know, that is fiscal conservatism and that is trying to rid the world of corruption. But they're just they're drowned out by the Ted Cruz's and the Donald Trump's of the world and, and everything else. The sensationalism, just just like you were you were referencing there. So we don't really hear about them now. They may be the minority, but I don't know because we, right. we don't hear about them enough. Right. Right. The, we, and, and when you say we don't hear about them, uh, we don't have control of the narrative. You're, you're on this program. No one's invited you on CNN yet. Um, yeah. The likelihood of that until you become the main contender is not going to happen. They just don't the, the 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 corporate media for both for both Republicans and Democrats because we we understand where I'm going with this. We understand that there there are R's and D's. They mean mm -hmm. something in certain places, but really we're looking at an establishment candidate versus a people's candidate, right? 
and and you're a people's republican candidate is what i what you're what we're hearing here i want to i want to show people why republican why the r is important in tennessee's second congressional district this is from wikipedia the second is one of the safest districts in the nation for the republican party it is one of the few ancestrally republican districts in the south no democrat has represented the district since 1855 the republicans uh for their uh, or their antecedents have held the district continuously since 1859 it was one of the only two districts in tennessee the other being the neighboring first districts whose congressman did not resign when Tennessee seceded from the Union prior to the Civil War. What does all that mean, everybody? What it means is that they were, that Tennessee was Republican when Republicans were Democrats. <laughs> and they stuck with that R all the way through the change because Republicans shifted in the 1880s. Republicans, Democrats did a flip. But this district stayed a R regardless. The person who's leaving office right now <laughs> was in there for it's been in there for, I don't know, 20, 30 years, and he took over for his dad. That's, that's, it's time for a change in the second district.